Welcome back to Level 6 Advanced. In this episode, we're going to start talking about Soft Delete. Now, Soft Delete is a very nice built-in Laravel feature that allows us to basically hide records as opposed to completely deleting them from the database. Now, the way that this actually works is using a timestamp column called deleted at, and if that is not equal to null, then that means that this record was soft deleted. Now, use cases of this are going to depend on your specific application, but it's a very nice way of keeping records of things like users. For example, imagine a user maybe deleted their account, but you don't want to lose all records of that user. You simply want to temporarily hide their account if you want to think of it that way. You can always bring back that account if you wanted to or whatever other record you are talking about. And that's the nice thing with soft deletes. I've done a little bit of homework for this episode and I've set up a very simple post. All I have is simply a post model in which I've turned guarded off. I've also got a migration for create post table, which just simply has a title and a body as well as a factory. So post factory. And here it is. Now, in terms of my controller, I've got a post controller, which in the index method, all it's doing is just returning all posts. And then in the browser, you'll notice we have a slash post route set up, and this is actually completely empty right now. I don't have anything in the database. We're actually using SQLite for this episode, but you can use just about any database that you would like. All right, with that being said, we need to add some records into this database. Now we do have a factory, so let's use the factory for that. Let's jump into PHP Artisan Tinker and run the following. We'll say PHP Artisan Tinker, use the factory to create some app post class. Let's create maybe 10 of them. We'll persist them to the database with create. Okay, now if we hit refresh, sure enough, we get that in here. It doesn't look very pretty, but if you're using Chrome, you can actually download a JSON plugin that you can use. It's called JSON Formatter, and we'll just look up for Chrome. And there it is. And JSON Formatter will actually nicely format things like this into a more readable way. So we'll add that to my Chrome as an extension. And with that added in, I'll give this a refresh. And there we go. Much nicer, right? So that's JSON Formatter. There are a ton of different JSON formatting extensions that you can use. That's just one of them. This is the one that I typically use. All right, so much easier to see now that we have this. Now, I could go back into my database and change the migration. You would know how to do that, but I would lose all of my records. So for this example, I'm actually going to show you how to create a complementary migration. This is one of those tricks that you pick up along the way whenever you've got some data already in production. And of course, you need to add this new deleted at column in order for this to work. So let me show you how to actually do that. I'll exit out of Tinker and we'll say PHP artisan make migration and we'll call this one add deleted at column to posts. Now we can pass a flag of dash dash table and we could tell it what table we want. The table that we want in this case is the posts table. This is going to pre-fill a couple of things for us. Um, so let's jump back to PHP storm and take a look Add deleted at column. Sure enough, you see here that we have posts pre-populated for us in our schema. So what we need to do here is go ahead and grab our table. And this is still the blueprint. And on this one, let's go ahead and add a new timestamp called deleted at. And this one needs to be nullable. And the reason for this is that any records that are not active will have a deleted at column of null. That means that it's not deleted. However, when you do delete it, all you're doing is setting this deleted at timestamp. Now, don't worry, the level actually does that for us. We're not actually going to do it. Now on our down method, if you write down methods, these are optional, but it's nice to always write them from time to time. So we'll say table, drop column, delete it at. So now we can migrate our database again with PHP, artisan, migrate. And there we go. So now we've added that deleted at column. Now if we hit refresh here, deleted at is null. But now if we wanted to make a change, for example, we can actually revert that back. We can say PHP, artisan, migrate roll back and this will actually give us an error and it might be a little bit confusing at first as to this but if you actually look at the documentation it warns you about this let's take a look if we jump into the level documentation let's go ahead and put drop column right here and there we go so to drop a column we actually require a special package and it'll tell us all about it right here 
and it's this doctrine package. And it tells you you will need to add it if you are using SQLite. Now, this is particular to me because I am using SQLite. And actually, one of the reasons why I did was because I wanted to show you about this doctrine package. Very simple to fix. We'll just do composer require. We'll require that package in. All right. So now that we have this package, let's go ahead and try this one more time. We'll go ahead and try to re roll back our database. And this time it does work. Now, the nice thing with this is now our data is still there, but we don't have that deleted at column migrate again. Of course, that'll work. Now we have our deleted column back into our table. Now, if you wanted to move this deleted at column after the body, you actually could. However, it wouldn't work in SQLite. It really only works in other database drivers. But what you would do is you would say, add my timestamp, but then I want you to add it after, and then you say a column name. In this case, I would say after body, right? And that would theoretically put it after this. I will leave that in the code. However, even if I migrated roll back and went back in, it wouldn't work because the way SQLite works, it doesn't respect that command. It would just throw that at the end anyway. So it wouldn't really work. However, it's a nice feature to know because in most scenarios, it is nice to have the time steps at the very end. So whenever you add any columns, I always use the after so that my regular updated and created at timestamps are always on the right. Just a little convention that I follow. OK, so with this, we're almost done with the setup. Back in the model, the only thing that I need to do is actually use soft deletes. So I could say use soft deletes. And that is located in Illuminate Database Eloquent, and it's called Soft Delete. OK, notice that it did get imported up here at the top. So with this, that has basically done everything that we need at that point. And to prove it, of course, we come back here. We still have all 10 of our records. However, let's pick the record with ID of one and let's try to soft delete that one record. All right, so we could do that using Tinker. We'll say PHP Artisan Tinker. We'll say give me my post from app post find give me id of one and there it is and then i can say post delete just a regular delete that you would use right nothing crazy now if we come back here we hit refresh notice id of one is gone we started with two three four eight nine ten and there is no id of one however that is still in our database and i can prove it like so we'll go ahead and fetch that post again and now it says no, right? It didn't find it. Interesting. Let's rewrite this a little bit. That way we can find it. We'll say where ID equals one get. Do you think that this is going to work? Nope, it doesn't work. OK, so we need one magic word in here. And that is with trashed. OK, and sure enough, there it is. So if you add the with trashed, you are able to access things that have been soft deleted. But notice that all of my regular things that I would normally use, such as a find and a where statement, those don't work. Those return either null or an empty collection or something like that. Soft deletes basically act exactly as if you had deleted the record. The record is still in your database, though. And so the nice thing is that if we add with trashed, in this case, we do get back this record. And so we have that right here. But again, just to recap. It doesn't appear here. You can use where statements. You can use your regular relationships that you're used to. You could do everything exactly the same, except the records are still in there. So how would we bring this record back? Well, truthfully, all you would really need to do is set this back to null. But of course, Laravel has a nice way for us to do that. So what I will actually do is go ahead and use the first one. There we go. That way I actually have the post and not just a collection. And so with my post, I can say restore. And there we go. It gave me a restore of true. And if I hit refresh, there is ID of one. Now, here's another little thing that you can do. Let's go ahead and create a quick policy. We'll say PHP artisan make policy post policy. And if we open this up, it's actually empty. Let's do something. Let me redo that. I will actually delete this file. Let's go back into here. And if you actually remember, we can actually pass in a model. Let me show you. We'll say help. And there we go. So the dash M flag will allow us to pass in a model. That way everything gets filled out for us. So we'll say dash M for post. And this time, there we go. And this time we do have a nice and full policy. Now in policies, check this out. Here's restore and here's force delete. So these are two things that we need to talk about that we haven't quite talked about. We did talk about the restore. And if you are using a policy, maybe 
restore can only be done by administrators. In that case, of course, you would do something like restore is only allowed if the user maybe is administrator. This doesn't exist. This is just code. Doesn't really exist. Just an example of something you can do. Because maybe your typical users, they can delete records, but they can't restore a record. Because in a way, that's almost like bringing a record back from the dead. A lot of times you may not want just a regular user to be allowed to do that. Maybe only administrators can actually restore a dead record. Finally, there is a force delete. And as the name would suggest, force delete is a true delete. This will completely kill that record off the database. Not soft delete it, but really get rid of it the way a normal delete call would work. So you're still allowed to permanently delete a record. It just doesn't work the way that you would intend it to. So how would we use force delete? Well, let's jump back into Tinker so I can show you that. And we'll go ahead and grab that post again. And there it is. We'll say with trash and give me the first one. And there it is. Now at this point, deleted at is set to null. If I really truly wanted to delete this, what I could do is say post force delete. And that equals to true. And now even if I tried to bring that post back, it's gone. That's really gone. This is not soft deleted at this point. Using force delete does delete the record off the database 100%. And if we head back into here, again, part of the policies, you have this restore and you do have these force deletes. So whenever you're generating your policies and using soft deletes at the same time, this is the way that you restrict who actually gets to permanently delete records and who actually gets to restore a record that has been soft deleted. Nice and easy to do with policies. We've talked about policies. So if you have any questions at all on generating policies for a model, check out the policies video. It's very thorough. We're not going to get into a lot of details with the policy because we've already covered that. So with that, we'll wrap it up for this lesson on soft deletes. I hope you find good use for soft deletes. I've used them a handful of times. Sometimes it's exactly what you need. And as always, my name is Victor. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.